Pastor Dan Roth, how are you? Great, uh, Antonio. How are you doing today, sir? I, oh, I'm awesome. I'm really looking forward. I'm excited about this special podcast series uh, that we are trying out. Uh, go and tell us why or what were the idea is behind this special podcast. Well, really, in any given message that we give at a church service, you don't have time to open up everything that the Word has to say about a subject. Yeah. That's why oftentimes people write books or why, why they do uh, additional materials that are supplemental. And that's what, what I viewed this really as, is, is as we were talking about grace, obviously we're approaching and unpacking certain subjects, we're teaching on them. And as we're teaching on them, somebody's going to say, well, yeah, how does that apply to my life personally? Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if they said that, what does this mean then? And I'd really like to just take some time, answer some of those questions and address some of those things and, and really expand on what it is that we're talking about, specifically with the subject of grace. And maybe if uh, people find a value in this, we can do this more in the future with other series or other messages. Yeah, absolutely. That, that would be great. I think it's, it's cool to just think about the idea of getting some clarity or, or having input in what's going to go forward, whether it's not we receive, whether it's from questions that we receive and now we can directly answer them. It's just a great medium to kind of hear what God is saying um, through uh, you, our pastor, and and really what we want to hear from the word. Um, Well, we're going to go into one of those questions or those set of questions that came out of part two of the series that Pastor Jim preached, an awesome, awesome message. Yeah, Um, it's really good. I know I was burning up my pen and pad. Uh, from that and some of the things that I know that stuff that came up to me and and people that were asking me about it. um, One of those was Pastor Jim made reference to taking the gift of grace. Uh, And and really, uh, you don't sit back and get get it without conditions on your part. Could you clarify conditions and and what that could mean? Well, let's start with the first one, taking the gift. Um, You know, God has promises throughout the word that he wants us to have. Uh, honestly, God wants us to have them more than we want to have them ourselves oftentimes and because God knows the benefit of them. You're not going to take something unless you have an attitude that says, I really want that. The Bible says that when you search for God, that you'll find him when you search for him with your whole heart. You really got to want God to yeah. get a hold of God. You really got to desire it. And it's no different with grace. That's good. There's many promises in the Bible, many things that are available to us that if we don't want them, if we're ignorant of them uh, or we're lazy, apathetic, Uh, We'll sit back and we'll never take hold of the things that God wants to give us. Now, the way that we do that is through faith. All throughout the Bible, you're not going to do anything except by faith. You can't live a life that's pleasing to God. You can't come to Him unless you believe He is and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And so the attitude has to be, I want this. And then by faith, I'm going to accept it as true, believe it, receive it. And that doesn't happen without conditions. In other words, this is not just a, you know, you sit back and, okay, God, I believe it. And then everything just falls into place in your life. Yeah, that's good. There's going to be have to, some, have to be some things that you do, some things that you put into practice in your life. You're going to have to have that attitude, and then you're going to have to uh, work for it. The conditions of grace. Uh, how, how do I do this? What do I do? What does God want me to do? Uh, if God is empowering me to do it, does God do it for me? Or does that mean that I have a part to play in this? And, yeah. and I believe what I see in the Word of God is that we do have our part to play and that those conditions are faith those conditions are that we're working with it. Yeah. Those conditions are that we're going to continue in it, uh, that it brings God glory, uh, that it doesn't lift us up, it lifts Him up. Those are all uh, conditions that, that we have to have on our part in order to receive that grace. Yeah, that's, a, that's awesome. And that's the saving grace that we talk about that's so amazing. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you think about it, God resists the proud, right? but He gives grace to the humble. Yeah. That's a condition. Mm-hmm. That's right. If you're going to receive salvation, you have to humble yourself and say, I can't save myself. Mm-hmm. I have to have God do this on my behalf. Right. Well, His grace is sufficient. It's made strength is made perfect in our own weakness. Uh, so that that makes that sums it up really. Um, going back to the message, Pastor Dan, uh, Pastor Jim made reference again to uh, activating the grace and then violating the principle of grace. Um, if you could kind of touch on that, which I know we we really touched on that in part three that you preached. Yeah, you know, um, I I think that Pastor Jim even quoted these scriptures in the book of James where he talks about faith and works. Faith is the activation 
and works will help you to not violate. That's good. Uh, you know, when, when you activate the grace of God, you're, you're saying, I, I believe that God has something for me. I, I, I can't do it on my own. I'm not proud. Uh, I need God. And so I believe that I'm going to receive it. And then the moment you start to work together with what you believe, you start to put action behind it and put legs to your faith, there is that impartation. There is that grace given. You know, you see things in the word like Peter telling Jesus, if that's you, Lord, command me to come out of the boat. He had a word from Jesus, come. That's good. But it wasn't until he got out of the boat that his foot was held up to be able to walk on the water. Yeah. So there was an activation mm-hmm. that took place when he believed the word that was given to him and he stepped out onto that word that was able to allow him to do a miracle to yeah. walk on water. Yeah. Yeah. But then the violation of the grace came when Peter got his eyes off of Jesus and looked on the circumstances. He started mm-hmm. to look at his surroundings. The wind was boisterous. Yeah. Uh, there was waves all around him. Now all of a sudden he starts to sink because now now his faith has now gotten off of Jesus and he's seen circumstances and surroundings as greater than the word of God that was delivered to him. And that's where we can often violate the grace of God, where we either want to work for our salvation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, the, Pastor Jim called it that it's a free gift. We see that in the Bible. It's the yeah. free gift of grace for salvation, that we, we can't do anything to earn it. Mm-hmm. Ephesians tells us, by grace you've been saved through faith. Yeah. That not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. It's not of works. Mm-hmm. So we understand that a violation of that grace would be, I believe that God has given it to me as a free gift, and now... I'm going to work for my salvation. That would be a violation. Yeah. Just as much on the other side of that is, hey, it's a free gift and God has given it to me and I believe that I receive it and now I'm not going to do anything with it. Mm-hmm. I remember, we talked about, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the gift. Um, really, if I was to give you a gift, Antonio, let's say I started to think about, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to purchase something for Antonio for Christmas coming up. So I started looking at different things on Amazon. I was looking over all the different uh, latest and greatest gadgets. I'm watching the infomercials, all that kind of stuff. And I see that there's a universal remote that had just come out that can just do everything in your house. Televisions, radios, uh, it'll work your computers, it'll work your lights, it'll work your garage door openers, it'll start your car for you, it'll feed your baby, <laughs> it'll do your dishes. Okay, so let's say I, I, I'm amazed by this thing. It's, it's sleek, it's pretty, it's shiny. And I know Antonio's going to love this. So I, I buy it, right? Mm-hmm. I, and I go at great lengths, great cost to purchase this gift for you. And I wrap it up in a nice, neat package. And I go over and I say, Antonio, Merry Christmas, my friend. Here's a gift for you. You receive it. All right. You open the package up. You even thank me for it. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, this is awesome. What does it do? And I say, well, you know, this will power your whole house. This will run your computers. It'll do your dishes. It'll feed your baby. And you're just amazed by everything that this can do. This is innovative. This is, this is huge. This is going to really help. And so you thank me for it, and I leave. And let's say I come back six months later, and I'm there, and I come into your house, and you offer me a drink, say, hey, sit down on the couch. And I come out and I see there's the remote. It's it's on the coffee table. He's yeah. obviously using it. <laughs> and as you bring me my gl- glass of water, you set the glass of water down on the remote. And I say, well, wait a second. This is electronics, yeah. man. You can't put water on a remote. And you say, well, we've been using it as a coaster all this yeah. time. Right. That would be a violation. Mm-hmm. Because that wasn't the purpose of what I gave that to you. I gave it for your lifestyle. I didn't give it to you to keep water off of your coffee table. That would be a violation. In the same way, when we don't use the grace that's been given to us, or when we misuse the grace that's been given to us for something that it's not meant for, or we ignore the grace of God. I mean, I would be just as saddened if I gave you that gift and I came over and didn't find it anywhere in your house and found out that you threw it away or gave it to someone else or it was collecting dust in your closet. Uh I would be, I would be hurt that you weren't using what I had given you. I think God feels that way about us sometimes. Uh, That's, that's, that's good. Well, and and that really goes into that part. It really answers itself, but grace may be rendered ineffectual, Pastor Jim referenced, and and oftentimes by our actions. Uh, Is that really what essentially is being said there, you know, finding it ineffectual? Yeah, you know, and we did cover this in, in part number three, where we talked about sanctification and really 
talking about what holiness is, when you look at the, that original language that we are saints, which really means that we are holy, we are set aside, and that there is a specific calling and purpose, that we have a unique expression of our lives. You know, many times people have gotten onto this whole thing about faith and works or uh, the law versus grace, that sort of a thing. And obviously, we, we've already said it, you can't work for your salvation. But you, you don't work to get saved. You do works because you are saved. Right, yeah. In other words, the good works will come out of a heart that is completely and totally committed to the Lord. You know, in the law, we had the Ten Commandments. Those were the words of the Old Covenant. You can find that in your Bible, in the book of Exodus. You can find it all throughout the Bible. Those were the words of the covenant. Yeah. That was the agreement, that if you do these things, you shall live by them. But here we find out the just shall live by faith. Yeah. Old and New Testament, you find that. So the just shall live by faith. Not only talking about salvation, but talking about our life here on the earth. So when we do good works, we realize I'm not earning any merit with God. Everything that God has given to me personally is unmerited. Part number one we talked about yeah. with Jesus, it was merited because he was perfect. Yeah. With us, it's unmerited because we don't deserve it, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. That's that unmerited favor that, <laughs> that is a great definition of right. grace for us. Right. Uh, but we expand that definition because it has to apply to Jesus mm-hmm. because by the grace of God, he tasted death for everyone. Right. So when we realize that grace is... God's sovereign divine ability to get the job done on our behalf when we can't do it, when it comes to our salvation, and when it comes to our sanctification, to violate that grace means that we have misused it, that we have either ignored it, that we have uh, used it for something that it's not intended for. Uh, That's where the Bible says to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor. When you don't do that, you're misusing Mm -hmm. the grace that's given to you. Uh, The Apostle Paul talked about all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. Mm -hmm. That I can misuse the grace, the ability that God's given me. I know plenty of Christians who have anointing, and they have used that anointing, that gift of God or that grace of God on their lives for their own personal pleasures or for their own personal exaltation. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, the Bible says some use holiness as a means of of gain, Mm -hmm. right? The Apostle Paul told Timothy, some people are making money off the gospel and and they're building their own empires rather than building the kingdom of God. That is a mis... That is violating grace. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, you know, Pastor Dan, I, I, you know, there was a lot of questions, uh, and, and that's the time that we have on this. And, and really what is really cool about this series and really special is that a lot of the questions that I know that I heard were essentially answered in the next uh, next week or next um, session of the of the series. Um, so as you guys have questions, as you listeners are, are are coming to church and hearing these messages, if you have questions, don't hesitate to maybe send them in and get in touch with us. But also know that that very likely will be answered in the next session. Uh, and again, Pastor Dan, I thank you for your time, and we're excited about these uh, po- the potential of what this can have. So again, if you guys have questions, let us know. Give us some feedback if this is really helping you guys out. That's that's the heart behind this and being able to kind of go a little bit further than what we have time for on a, on, on a Wednesday night or a, a Sunday message. For sure. It's been a pleasure and I enjoy this kind of stuff. And so I'm excited to get something started and see where it goes. Uh, I would encourage all of our listeners, if you do have a question, that sort of a thing, uh, rockchurch.com, go to our messages, listen to the message. And then after that, uh, you know, take good notes, write those questions down and then hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. Instagram, post it in the comments, uh, you know, and, and uh, or, or send us an email, email at rockchurch.com and put in your uh, your message title podcast or grace podcast um, that way we know where to send that and we will make sure to try and answer your question continue in the grace of God we love you guys